Hey guys, this is Gail Kim from Impact Wrestling, and you are listening to the 8-Bit Suplex Podcast. Welcome everybody to another edition of the 8-Bit Suplex here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. I'm one half of your co-host. Uh, very thankful to have my other co-host because uh, I think probably without her, nobody would listen to this show because nobody wants to listen to me talk about wrestling for however long we talk about it, or video games for that matter. Uh, but without further Hello, ado, <laughs> Sandy, how are you? Hi, I'm good, Jess. How are you? Oh, you know, just getting ready for the holiday. Uh, you know, getting the house packed up, ready to move. Had a uh, a good recording session with uh, with Rich and James on One Nation Radio last week, uh, so definitely oh, yeah. uh, you know that one out. check that one out for sure. We talked about uh, the Sendai Cinderella uh, show from Stardom, so definitely uh, go check that out. And we also previewed Survivor Series. A preview of Survivor Series probably wouldn't help you out much now that we're past Survivor Series, <laughs> but definitely go check out our review of uh, of Sendai Cinderella. Uh, we get pretty in depth with it. Some really good stuff. Um, I don't know how much Stardom you've watched, but I think it's actually probably the first time I've ever sat down and watched a full Stardom show from start to finish. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I am so jealous. I have yet to do that. And Stardom has been like on my top list of promotions to watch. And I know just a couple of the wrestlers and, you know, I watched some things here and there, but never actually sat down and watched a full show and watch enough to be like, all right, this, these are my favorites, these are the faces, these are the heels, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. It just hasn't been consistent. And I've always kind of kicked myself in yeah. the ass for that because there's such amazing talent in that promotion. Oh, my God, they are so hard-hitting. They are. They do things that, man, just, what I've seen have just completely blown me away. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And what's crazy, too, is that, like, and I didn't realize this until after the fact, but in one of the multi-man matches, there was a 13-year-old wrestling, so... Um, yeah. it's it's kind of nuts because we would see that as a problem here in the states, uh, oh, but right. in Japan they're just like business as usual, man. What do you mean, you know? <laughs> so uh, and man, those, their training those, is tough. It it is. It's very tough. They put them through that dojo system just like the men. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely check out that show and then uh, check out our review on One Nation Radio. Um, but other than that, I mean, just uh, you know. We uh we took last week kind of off, kind of impromptu, uh you know between uh, my house moving and you had some family in from out of town. I, I you uh you told me so, you know it just kind of uh, seemed like a good uh, pre-holiday break for us. That's exactly what happened. Just timing, so we're so sorry we couldn't bring you guys a new episode, and because of that, today we will be covering Impact. We'll be covering the latest show that happened just yesterday, November twenty fourth, and we'll kind of. You know, for any kind of storylines that we may have missed, we'll maybe touch up on what happened on the uh, November 17th episode, but we're not going to fully cover the 11th, 17th show. We figured, hey, why cover the two shows? I feel like that would be just such a long drag. So we're going to briefly cut to the chase and get into Impact. We Lots of stuff happened in the past couple of weeks. Um, of course, from the aftermath from uh, Turning Point. What did you think of Turning Point? Uh, you know, I thought Turning Point was actually a, a really fun show. Um, we have, uh, you know, uh, some, you know, debuting action out of, uh, Joe Doring, uh, which I was not, uh, expecting. Um, that was kind of cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just overall some pretty good matches. Uh, more titles changed than I thought was going to happen. I didn't expect, uh, mm-hmm. Deanna Peraza to get her knockouts championship back. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I, you know, I really liked the show quite a bit. It was really fun. I only got to see about half of it. I know I'm laughing so much. But then, of course, you know, we do see everything that kind of the, the fallout from it. Um, so much happening. And the one major thing I do want to call out from the 1117 show is it was the last Treehouse segment. It was the final match of the Rassels on Impact Wrestling. And, of course, we had uh, them team up. It, it was going to be... Um, Rich Swan and Trey Miguel versus Dez and Wentz. It was an amazing match. Of course, they Very went good. and did everything. Yeah, oh my God, they they completely just 
stole the show. They left their mark. They did exactly what they set out to do, and that was to make an impact. And impact, no pun intended, I swear. I did not even think <laughs> of that one ahead of time. <laughs> and it was really sad at the end because, I mean, even from, from them just coming to the ramp, you know, they were teary-eyed. Trey Miguel couldn't hold it together. Like, he was crying from the get-go. Dez looked so... He looked pissed. I was like, what is wrong with him? But he was just trying so hard to hold back the tears. And towards the end of the match, they just kind of all broke down. And I, I don't know about you, but I definitely cried a little bit. <laughs> I got I very emotional. I wouldn't say that I cried, uh, but I definitely <laughs> felt the emotion there. And, and, uh, and yeah, you're right. I mean, this is where these guys, you know, kind of became the the names that we know them to be now and and without them really stepping up and um creating such a quote-unquote impact uh in the tag team division there um you know i i i don't know where they go to to fill that void um it because they were one of the best uh acts going there so um we're sad to see them go um happy to see where they wind up um and and that they get obviously are going to continue to work and get booked and and get you know hopefully a long term contract out of it uh, and you know get some financial stability which I think uh, we could all use here in twenty twenty. Oh hell yeah! With that being said, I need somebody to hold me back from those uh, Black Friday shopping video game deals. Uh, we'll get to that later, <laughs> but. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start. So the show starts out. Of course, we do have a, like they always do, kind of give us a preview. Not a preview, but like a reminder of what happened last week and everything that's transpired. Uh, but we do start in the ER with uh, Johnny Bravo in a coma. So Scott Demore right. is ready to pull the plug from this man. For <laughs> I, I actually, like, I legitimately laughed out loud. He was like, oh, God. He looks terrible, and the doctor comes in. It's like I have some news. Like, just pull the plug. And I right. just started laughing. I was like, "Same." <laughs> I love how he was like, uh, uh, "Yeah, no, I'm not his dad, uh, but I, ha- I have power of attorney. So if we need to pull the plug, yes. I mean, just go right ahead." <laughs> uh, no, that's that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. The doctor just, yeah, the doctor just says, "Hey, it's a okay." And then, of course, we'll get to that later. This the show is very. Uh, wrestler's court heavy which we'll get to of course a little bit i mean i don't know how much more we want to talk on it it was pretty straightforward i thought um but the first match of the night we start off in a uh knockout tag team tournament match between sarah hogan and sasha Steele. this is the second match in the tournament if i'm mm-hmm. not mistaken the Correct. last one taking place last week um that was uh like they actually beat alicia and Sorry, Yes, there you yeah. go. They actually got defeated by Havoc and Nivea. So now this is the second match. Um, and of course, we see, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Josh, how familiar you are um, with the Sea Stars. But I've actually been watching Ashley Vox in the Indies for quite some time. And I'm absolutely obsessed with her. She's so charismatic and she gives it her all in that ring. And she really, I've seen her stuff with Chris Statlander, if I'm not mistaken. And. Just a lot, lots of different matches that she's had in the Indies all over the place. And I, I absolutely love her. And I love that she partners with her sister. Um, and their whole thing on, on she calls herself the, a real catch, but not like R-E-A-L. It's R-E-E-L. Right, yeah, the, the puns. Yeah, the puns are <laughs> everywhere. Uh, yeah. No, that was actually uh, the first time I saw them in action. So uh, I've never seen either one of them on Russell. I'm not as... Uh, I haven't watched as much of the Indies as you have, um, but I I thought they held their own pretty well here against a, a pretty formidable team of Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Absolutely. Um, we start off with Kiara, and we start... Oh my God, I gotta find... Do you have her name on there with you? Not Ashley Box, but her sister's name, uh, the taller. Del, Delmi Exo. Delmi Exo. So she starts out with lots of creative pin opportunities from the get-go, and it looks solid. It was, it was some pretty good, solid technical pins there. When Vox got in the ring, I was sensing some nerves coming from her. Usually she's very hard-hitting and very precise, and I feel like right from the get-go, she kind of missed that spot where she was supposed to get out of the turnbuckle when Tasha yeah. Steele's coming in, and then mm-hmm. she goes and tries it again and actually nails it. So I feel like it was a lot of nerves. I feel like she was kind of nervous about like working the camera and getting all that situation uh, kind of happening there for them as their shot, of course. Um, but she she's solid, man. I and even and even with the nerves, I thought she she looked she still looked great. Um, and also, I wanted to know Tasha and Kira have grown 
so much on me over the time that we've been watching Impact. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I was like, okay, Tasha Steele, you know, you can you can kind of tell she's not, she's still kind of getting the hang of things, you know, in the in the very beginning. But man, no, she's so solid, and and I think her and and Kiera could be one of the tag teams to make it all the way and win the championship at the end. Um, especially them being, you know, impact talent, impact grown talent. I know Kiera has been there for a very long time. So what did you think of the match? Yeah, I thought the match, uh, you know, I thought it went pretty good. Um, you know, we're, we're clocking in over seven minutes here, um, which with the exception of the main event, it is the longest match on the card. It really kind of the only match that really uh, meant anything. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I thought it was really good. It was a good showing for the Sea Stars. Uh, maybe we see them pop up somewhere else. Maybe they pop up in impacts, you know, kind of more full time. Given now that we have the knockout tag titles that are going to be a permanent fixture, um, but yeah, no, I thought they did really well. And then Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steeles, uh, you know, they own their characters. They own their work in the ring. They were getting really, really good. Um, I'm interested to see kind of their next match will either be against Deanna Perazzo and Kimberly or Taya and Rosemary. Um, which I don't really, I can't really tell who might kind of get that one. That that one kind of seems, in you know, kind of hard to predict. Uh, because Ty and Rosemary are the veterans. They're the you know they're the the mainstays of Impact. Um, but then you know you have Diana, who's the Knockouts champion. So you know we'll have to kind of see where that one goes. But uh, yeah, I mean I could see Kira and Tasha, you know, because they they'll they'll win by by hook or by crook, right? So. Uh, they're kind of that that tweener, not really a heel, but they're certainly not a babyface team either. Um, so really good match out of them. I will say, you know, Kira Hogan um, over the past day on Twitter has kind of tweeted out some things that are kind of like, ooh, you know, maybe someone needs to do a wellness check kind of thing. Um, oh no. So yeah, you know, things like uh, I just want to run away, tough love with a broken heart emoji, I'm quitting life dead to the world. Uh, if you need me, my phone is being switched off. Um, so we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, certainly, um, just to, you know, make sure everyone's okay. Um, so who, who sure knows? So. Um, that's, that's going on like about a day or so of, of that happening. So, um, but yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Um, but she, she definitely had a good week, uh, in the ring, picking up the win uh, with Tasha Steeles, so you know we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. And I will say that Josh, maybe. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say. I mean, we they've they've already taped. I think the majority of what the tournament is going to be leading up to. Um. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hard to kill, which is where I think I believe they're doing the, the uh, championship match. So we'll see, kind of, uh, oh, right. you know, you know how that that plays out. But I think they've they've pretty much taped everything that's airing in December. I believe. Um, so we'll see. We'll see, kind of, uh, you know, where they go from there. We shall see. But I do wanted to ask you: Did you by any chance? I know you didn't take a lot of notes from from Impact this this episode, but did Kira actually pin the legal Sea Star? Because I could have swore Vox was the legal man, the legal woman in that match, and then like. They took her to the outside and brought her sister in, which I still cannot get her freaking name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, Domi, Domi XO. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think there was a time, I too, to that... I think there was a time, too, that Tasha was in the ring working without a tag. Like, she never tagged in, but she just kind of de facto became the legal person in. Uh, so there was kind of some, you know, fast and loose with the, uh, you know, kind of, uh, what do they call those, lucha tag rules? So, oh you know. <laughs> yeah, like oh god, everyone's in the ring. I don't know what to do, and the referee's just like, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> right? Yeah, we see that you know almost uh, we every time the uh, Lucha Bros are involved in a tag match, nobody knows who the hell they, they, they don't they don't tag in and out really. They just kind of oh he's in the ring, so he's the legal man. So, um, which you know, I, which I, and and having watched you know a, a fair amount of uh, Lucha Libre, I will say it is, does seem to be kind of like a fifty fifty. Uh, tag in tag out kind of situation so you know who knows <laughs> the longer the match goes like the pit the task just completely disappear and it's like oh god well let's just trust the rest like i don't know what the ref is there for he's just kind of like oh god <laughs> yeah especially when they throw rick Knox out there who's just completely just like uh 
I don't. All right, whatever. You know, like, so. Why did you like shit? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so moving right along. So right after the match, we see Jordan Grace. He's looking at the monitor and not in the super cheesy way that WWE does. It. They're just he's watching. You know, it's not completely from that weird, awkward side angle. Which I, I that's immediately what I thought when I watched it. I'm like, all right, yeah, they're just shooting her watching the thing, not from the weird angle thing. But guess what? She is teaming up with freaking Jazz before her retirement. Not Jordy Grace's retirement, Jazz's retirement. And right. they are tagging, they're teaming up together in this tournament. And I cannot wait. I freaking love Jazz. <laughs> yeah, no, I that's was so that was. That was pretty awesome. That was a good reveal. And, and, you know, we were kind of like, oh, we don't know who Jordan's going to tag with. You know, there's, you know, are they going to bring someone in? Uh, But, yeah, no, Jazz is, I mean, hey, if you're going to pull in somebody from the outside to, you know, spice up your tournament a little bit, why as well pull in Jazz? Um, That is the person to do it, yes. So we'll see how how she does. Uh, You know, I'm sure that she'll do fine. Oh, she still looks fantastic. I was like, oh, God, how old are you, woman? Because you still, you look, she still looks fantastic. I cannot wait to see yeah. her back in there. I mean, she she probably <laughs> looks as as um, as buff as, as ever, right? As as muscular as oh ever. So, I mean, I I wouldn't fight her. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Throw my ass out everywhere. <laughs> but next, of course, so this, this episode, I will warn you guys, if you haven't seen it yet, it is very backstage heavy. We're setting up a lot of things throughout December, throughout all these tapings. Not that that's a bad thing, because I feel like Impact really nails the whole uh, backstage segments and their interviews. They completely nail it. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. feel forced. If it's supposed to be funny, we get that. It's not supposed to be taken too seriously. If it's something that extends the storyline and they're not reading some boring lines, it's, it's them. It's them. It's their character. It's their personality. And it's not forced. Um, right. So when we talk about backstage segments, you know, they hit the nail on the head. I am I'm all for it. I'm the biggest freaking Impact fan right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not even sponsored, you guys. I promise we're not getting paid no, by Impact, not at all. by Access TV, by whoever owns them. I promise you we are just new fans who are just trying to appreciate the product. But anyways, <laughs> we do see Ethan Page and Josh Alexander backstage. Page dropping the news of Josh Gallows apparently being out of action for four to six weeks. Mm-hmm. So Ethan is super stoked. He's laughing his ass off. He's like, hey, let's go buy, let's go celebrate with whoever did this to Josh Gallows. But Josh, not so excited. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but I feel like this is the very first time I, we've heard Josh Alexander speak. <laughs> Since we've watched Impact, can you recall him speaking in any other, other any other segment? No, I I think you might be right there. I, I mean, he he normally Ethan is is the uh, mouthpiece certainly, but he definitely uh, fires back pretty hardcore here and and uh, shuts him oh, down because is- you know you can't challenge for the tag titles if one of the two guys is hurt. So they're like, he's like, what are you doing? We have to wait six it weeks now so to get our fun. titles back. <laughs> Exactly, and I can't believe Ethan didn't even think about that. And it's like, hello, if Doc Alice is out, you guys can't challenge, you guys can't get your titles back. And Josh put it perfectly. He's like, why are you excited? I want the titles back right away. And I was like, oh, you make a good point, Josh. And, you know, his anger, his frustration came out so natural, too. It was just him yelling at his tag team partner, like, what are you thinking? Yeah. So it was perfect. And, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. So they nailed that. And then next, of course, we go into Wrestler's Core. Dun, dun, dun. This is exactly what the Wrestle House stuff is supposed to be. It's supposed to be goofy. They're not taking them so seriously. It's <laughs> I I don't even know how to describe this to someone who's not watching. <laughs> They're yeah. backstage in this box core thing made out of the containers where they bring all the production things in. It's so funny. You know, it was a really good segment. I need your help, Josh. Yeah, so, I mean, for those that don't know or don't have listened to the the Conrad verse uh, of podcasts, this is a wrestler's court was something that Bruce Pritchard brings up uh, quite a bit um, on something to wrestle. So basically the idea is that if somebody did something, the boys in the back would gather up and then they'd have what quote-unquote wrestler's, wrestler's court. So basically, you know, whatever the case may be, say 
uh, you know, you left some guy at the hotel instead of making, you know, instead of driving him to the next town or whatever it is, they'd have wrestler's court and then you'd have to buy that guy like a case of beer or something like that. You know, nothing really serious. So uh, it's definitely uh, laying into, you know, kind of a, a peek behind the curtain of wrestler's court, right? So uh, we have the uh, the honorable uh, Judge Dreamer uh, who uh, sent me over his, you know, hit the briefs before the, uh, you know, through Twitter. Just so that I could study oh, them, right. make sure, right, make sure that you know everything was in order. Um, but yeah, no, he uh, and then uh, Madison Rain uh, winds up representing her locker room uh, talk co-host Johnny Swinger, who is on trial for the murder or the attempted murder of Johnny Bravo. Um, and then she points out, like, hey, like, what gives here? Like, you ran the entire investigation. Why are you the judge? And he's like, oh yeah, good point. So he winds up switching with the uh, the prosecution. Um, who was originally uh, D'Lo Brown, uh, which I think, what did they say? That he's from the, the nation of uh, of legislation or something like, something something <laughs> something silly like that, right? Um, and so D'Lo winds up... a lot up, of great fun. Right, so D'Lo winds up being uh, the judge. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was... I, I don't know that we need to... to touch on every little thing because like you said there's it's just it's very joke heavy and i would say probably half of this episode is wrestler's court um so it, it would be difficult to summarize and go back and and kind of peek back and jump back in and out of this thing um but yeah it's definitely worth going and making sure that you go and and, and hear all the different jokes like uh you know swinger at some point says the name ron simmons which you know, prompts D'Lo to go, damn, right? Just like Ron Simmons <laughs> used to do. So you know, uh, it was it was a really fun segment. I really like. I really enjoyed. Like I I I LOL'd a couple times, uh, watching Russell score. It was so good, dude. Swingers, wait, yeah, Swinger. And there's the Johnny and then Johnny. Right. I had to get their names right. <laughs> Swinger with his one-liners. He's a great promo. Like he is that character. And I think it, uh, Tommy said something about. Oh no. Swinger was like, I am the, I am the OJ Simpson of pro wrestling. And Tommy <laughs> goes, when was the last time you read a newspaper? He's like, 91. Uh, he didn't say brother. He's a 91. What, he's like, he could call him Dreamer Baby. Daddy. Daddy. Daddy, daddy, damn it, daddy. 91, daddy. And I, I started laughing so hard. Like, his one-liners were amazing. This man is that character, and I love him for it. Yeah, um, and at, at that yeah, point, like said, <laughs> at that point, Dreamer's like, uh, "Yeah, I got no other questions." <laughs> <laughs> like clearly, you didn't do this because you're not that great of a, a genius or anything like that. But anyway, like like you mentioned, you know, they do a lot of uh, cutbacks to wrestlers court, and it was hilarious. If you, I know it's not the cup of tea of a lot of people that want to take wrestling super seriously, and I understand, but I feel like, you know, they're doing it. They're not taking themselves seriously. It's fun. It's all in good fun. But we do find out who ended up shooting Johnny Bravo, which was... Drum roll, please. Can you do a drum roll? I don't know if it's coming through this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it will. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. He's going to drum roll, you guys. But it was Lawrence, Lawrence D, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not... Not, not Larry yeah. D. <laughs> not Larry Lawrence D. Lawrence D. But we find that out because uh, Bravo awakes from his coma, of course, because Rosemary admits that she doesn't... She never loved him. It was all about never the virginal blood. It was virgin blood. All about the virginal Which, blood. Which, Like, how old is he? He's a virgin? I mean, not ill. I mean, everyone has different lives. Damn it, right, ignore me. Right. We're not here to judge. <laughs> We're not here to judge. Uh, no, but <laughs> so uh, he he wakes from his coma very angry, and he says he knows who killed him, or tried to kill him because he could smell him. And of course, if you remember back from Russell House, this is long term storytelling here, Sandy. Long term, exactly, um, which I'm very proud of. If you remember from uh, Russell House, uh, Larry D puts on his uh, cologne called Ring Rust which is a very distinct smell and of course turns him into Lawrence D who then confesses to the attempted murder of Johnny Bravo because if you recall from Russell House Lawrence D was in love with Rosemary because of a spell that she put on him to make him fall in love with her to make Bravo jealous to get him to 
for, you know. So we're coming full circle on this thing. What and a for, story. And, you know, I'm just like, man, <laughs> you know, this is like a solid four months of story uh, all coming through on this, you know, who shot Bravo thing. So, um, <laughs> the, I, you know what, kudos to them, my hats off to them. I didn't see them actually, like, it, how refreshing is it for a wrestling show, Sandy, to come back full circle on, like, four months of television? Dude, I feel like it's even longer. No, it's about four months. I have a terrible sense of time. I don't even know why I was trying to put my input in there. But you're <laughs> absolutely right. And it kind of blew me away because I thought, okay, they were going to pick some, like, person we haven't even seen before to create a new story. And then, like, it didn't even make sense. Because, you know, that's how usually wrestling goes, you know, what we're used to anyways. Where right. it's kind of out of nowhere, like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Like, this would have made more sense. And Impact, of course, didn't do that. They they went with the route like, hey, we have this story from forever ago. And if you've been watching the show, if you are watching and keeping up with Bethel House, you'll know exactly, like, this makes perfect sense. Lawrence was in love with Rosemary. Rosemary ended up marrying Johnny Bravo. I always want to say Johnny Swinger. I have to slow down the roof. But, yeah, I thought it was hilarious. And then, of course, the wrestler's court was not for determining who shot Johnny Bravo, but it was to determine if Johnny Swinger had done it. So he's off the hook and that was wrestler's court. Did I miss anything from that? I think that was it, right? <laughs> I think we touched on it. Uh, I mean, it, it's a tremendous amount of of the episode, so definitely go check it out if you didn't, you know. I don't think we I think we touched on all the key points. Um, and, yeah. and, and we didn't spoil all the jokes, so please go listen and watch uh, wrestler's <laughs> court. Um, I don't know if, if someone out there, uh, you know, maybe wants to, to uh, put a smash cut on YouTube of just the wrestlers' court uh, segments. That'd by all cool. means, that would be great. <laughs> Please go do that. Yeah. Or hey, uh, Impact Wrestling, if you're listening, Gail Kim, if you're listening, go back. <laughs> you know, hey, <laughs> exactly. Go back and 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 ask someone to do that. Ask one of those uh, AV nerds. That's what they're there for. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, really great segments. It was so good. And also, because of this, I just found out that D'Lo Brown is a freaking producer for Impact. I had no idea. Did you know that? Uh, I was aware of that, yep. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I was. I, I almost I popped when I saw him come out. I was like, oh, <laughs> D'Lo Brown. And I'm like, oh, wait, he's a producer, my man. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, he goes by uh, DeLorean Brown, uh, because I don't know if he can use D'Lo Brown or not. You know, one of those, you know, one fun those things. things. <laughs> I'm moving right along, you guys, in this episode of Impact for 1124. We have next my man, my idol, Repeat <laughs> Raju, with those promo of a lifetime in the ring. Can't even really recall what he said, but I was just like blown away by it because I think he just said, What was the promo about? Just him being better. Of course, the regular heel shit. I'm better right. than you. And, but the, just the way, oh man, the way that this man works the mic, I am obsessed with him. I need, I need a shirt. <laughs> oh, Pro Wrestling Tees has a sale right now for Black Friday. And guess what? You can find our t-shirts there for the 8-Bit Suplex Podcast. They are on sale and any other t-shirt from the uh, Social Suplex Network. So go check those out. That's my plug of the evening. Yeah, for sure. Uh, right along. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he is having a match against Suicide, and so it's really funny, because the, the match was supposed to be, it was supposed to be the Beat Rookie Raju Challenge for the Exhibition Championship, but as soon as Suicide comes out, Rookie, it's like, no, no, this isn't happening, I see what you're doing, this isn't gonna, nope, mm -mm. he takes the championship off of the, the, the match, he says, no, this isn't for the title, it's gonna be just a one-on-one, -on -one and that's it. So it's no longer a championship match. And we see these two go at it. I thought it was a, a pretty solid match. It wasn't really supposed to be much of anything because this is, this is mainly one of those story things. Mm -hmm. um, you, as you guys recall, TJP has been the chase of Rohit Raju and for that X Division championship. But Scott Demore said, hey, no, you're out of opportunities. You can no longer challenge him for that championship as long as he is the champion. And we saw him last time, TJP being like, Oh, okay, well, maybe if I can be, if I can just not be TJP, I can still get the championship. So the thinking here from Rohit, of course, is very smart. He thinks, hey, it's TJP under the mask, which is exactly what I thought at first. What did you right. think of this match, Josh? 
Uh, no, I thought it was a very good match, and, and like you said, you know, Scott Demore even said, hey, nobody named TJP is allowed to challenge, so as long as it's anybody not named TJP, you know, and then, of course, they kind of play that, you know, TJP is not the smartest guy in the world, so, you know, who knows if he figured it out or not, right? And I, I think he finally gets <laughs> it at the end. Um, but, yeah, no, uh, Suicide trots out. Um, and so pretty much the whole match, uh, you know, where he uh, is trying to claw at the mask to reveal TJP. And I could tell based on, on kind of how he was moving and also just the, the overall physique that it wasn't TJP. Yeah, yeah, because it was a bit of a bulkier person. Um, I didn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell who it was. Uh, I just knew that it wasn't TJP. Um, but yeah, no, very good match. You know, clocks in just about five minutes. Um but yeah, for you know something that was just kind of pushing the story along, uh, I thought it was really good. And uh, you know, yeah. of course, he eventually gets the mask off, and uh, it's revealed to be uh, Crazy Steve, who gets the gets the jump on him uh, after TJP comes out and uh, gets the win. So uh, Crazy Steve, believe it or not, defeats Rahit Raju in the non-title match. And so now I'm sure we can expect some kind of him chasing the exhibition championship, which, like we've talked about before, we're not the biggest Crazy C fans, mainly because of that character. But, man, he, after the match that we saw from, actually, I think this may have been in the eleven seventeen episode. Um, yeah, so we have actually we didn't get to talk about this, but they, Brian Myers and Crazy Steve had a, um, mm-hmm. a great match. Actually, they've had a couple of matches, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, he had the one, and then he had the one with Swaggle that Crazy Steve ran in on. That's right. Gotcha. No, it was last week. It was last week that Brian Myers and Crazy Steve had had a match, and I absolutely loved that match. I thought they, they had Steve looked absolutely great. Usually, he doesn't because he does all these little comedy matches, but this with Brian Myers, this is a type of of a match he could really excel in, and I'm gl- I'm kind of glad, you know, if he's you know done with the whole comedy crap that he normally does from Wrestle House and he's actually going to be in the running for the exhibition championship and maybe getting some opportunities to wrestle other guys and, and go for the chase of the title then good for him I'm excited to see that other side of it because what I saw from him and Brian Myers the previous episode was fantastic um so yeah it wasn't TJP it was actually Crazy Steve and of course we do see EY coming along Wait, let me make sure I have that right. No, nah, I think you jumped ahead there. Do you Eric Young, Eric okay. Young comes out much later. Much later. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Oh, All right. right. Next. So now I do go. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Give me. We're gonna need to cut that part. <laughs> well, no, we're no. You're good. <laughs> well, leave it in. <laughs> no, you gonna yep. leave me in here. So for everyone listening, because apparently he's not going to edit it. He's like, hey, so I'm going to need you to um, to take the lead on this one because my notes are limited. Because my, my child was, was on me and I was carrying her. We were watching Impact. So I'm a nervous wreck right now directing the show <laughs> and leading. Because usually I'm like, I usually go by like what Josh says. And like he kind of guides me. Like I'll put like, some input here. But like now I feel like I'm driving and I'm trying not to crash us and steer us into a tree, you guys. So... <laughs> Listen, it's okay. FYI, we, we got that. a we got a good vehicle. If we hit a couple of trees, it'll be okay. What kind of car do we have? A Hummer? Those uh, I won't say Hummer. Uh, what's the uh, what's the um, the Warhog from Halo? That's what we're driving, so we'll be all right. Indestructible. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, those are those are fantastic. That was my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next impact. Uh, we see Shamrock and Sammy backstage. They're getting hyped up for the main event. So tonight we're actually going to get Ken Shamrock uh, versus Rich Swan for the main championship, the world championship. And, of course, Moose interrupts Sammy. And it's so funny because as soon as Moose comes into the frame, and Sammy goes, look at this dumbass, and, like, gets right in front of him to block <laughs> him from seeing Ken, which I popped so hard for. I, I don't know why I, that made me laugh so hard. But Moose is pretty much in there to say his title is superior, and he wanted Swan first. Um, he's upset that he's not getting him, and he tells Ken, like, hey, 
if you do end up getting the win over Rich Swan, just re- remember what happened the last time we saw each other. Last time we met in that ring. Apparently, Moose beat Kent's ass. When was this? Do you recall? Uh, you know, was it, I, it was. It was before our time. So we'll just we'll just say uh, it happened previously on Impact Wrestling. Previously, yeah. So Moose beat Ken, and now he's saying, "Hey, if you win, I'm coming for you." Which, hey, makes sense. And um, now next we, oh man, very back to Kevy. Daniel and Kay, Caleb with a K, being them, of course, backstage, are trying on glasses for Tanil. Sure. Alicia <laughs> Edwards approaches them, and she's like, it's all about us, right? <laughs> right, so she still thinks that awkward. she's a tag partner. <laughs> oh, my God, it was so cringy. I was like, girl, no, Tanil does not want to partner with you. Uh, so, of course, she wants to keep tagging with them together, and Tanil not so much. I'm not really sure how this ended. This was just Tanil saying, was well, she still kind of giving her the cold uh, shoulder? I know she just kind of said, something. like, uh, yeah, sure, whatever, fine. And that was kind of it. So I guess Alicia and Tanil okay. will remain a tag partner uh, for now. I oh, guess. We'll see. Even though they've been eliminated. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe they'll challenge for it uh, later on. Who knows? That Sunil didn't sound very enthused about that. Alicia was. Uh, <laughs> that was that. And, oh, the next match I was very excited for. We have Kimberly with Deanna by her side versus Killer Kelly with her Impact Knockout debut. And she comes out with Renee Michelle, which mm-hmm. they are actually a tag team in the tag tournament um, for the Knockout Tag Team Championship. I also want to let our listeners know if you're in the Tampa Bay area, Renee Michelle will actually be at the GCW show December 4th in Tampa. There mm-hmm. is the Diamond Cup going on. Lots of great female talent there. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. GCW, Renee Michelle will be there, and it is December 4th here in Tampa. So definitely check that out. Moving right along. How much do you know about Killer Kelly, Josh? Uh, well, I know that she was with WWE for a time and then was granted her release. Um, I believe that I saw her at, I think she was in, was she in the Mae Young Classic 2? Um, I think she was. And if that was the case, I was at Mae Young Classic 2. Um, there was a lot of heavy hitters uh, there. So uh, if she wasn't, if she was there, I don't really remember her too, too much uh, being there. Um, just because that was, I mean, Mako Satamora. You know, Shirai, Tony Storm oh. were all a part of that tournament. So, um, yeah. if I sorry, <laughs> sorry, Kelly, you know, or uh, you know, Raquel as as her shoot name. Um, but yeah, no, she uh, has that kind of really uh, intense, almost uh, MMA style uh, of of wrestling. Um, I really like her a lot. Uh, every chance that I've gotten to see her. Um, so, and and I was hoping, uh, you know, they would give her kind of a little bit more of a uh, a shine here, but. You know, unfortunately, it's it's you know it's a four minute match to further Deanna and Sue Young's uh, storyline versus giving you know giving it because Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle have a first round matchup against Jordan Grace and Jazz, so they're gonna lose. <laughs> so I I would have liked to yeah. see them give Kelly the win here just to kind of show like oh they might have a chance and actually you know invest in that tag tournament a little bit there. Uh, but I get it, you know, this, this young uh, Deanna Perrazzo of it all is, is kind of the more important part of this match. So, um, but yeah, no, I thought it was a really good match. I was like, 100% right there with you. I really thought they were going to give a chance for uh, Killer Kelly to really show what she's made of, what she can do in there. And I was really excited to see her, but unfortunately, man, she didn't get any offense in there whatsoever maybe like one thing that she did kimberly was just destroying kelly from the get-go and um yeah i absolutely love her look like you mentioned she has that kind of mma look but it's not done to the point where i don't know i feel like there's a lot of characters out there that kind of try to do the mma look and it just kind of looks either overdone or like they're trying too hard or it's not legitimate or if it is legitimate it's like who cares Right. She she has her wrestling gear. Yes, she uses the mouthpiece, but she 
like to me her look is just so much more than just that MMA look. She has like that those crazy eyes and they're super dark and her intensity and her facial expressions to me is just everything. And I know she can go. I've seen her matches. She can go in there. And I can't believe this woman's not signed yet because she has an, an amazing look. But yeah, did not get to see much of her. I can't believe you just said it was four minutes because to, to me it felt like it was longer. But man, four minutes just seems like absolutely just nothing. It was such a short match. Right. Um, she, but Kimberly, I mean, of course, you're in there with a great opponent. She got to really show what she can do as well, and she she always gets to do that. Um, Kimber gets the pin with a beautiful flying senton, which she always does, and it was just perfect. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I can't wait to see what what Killer Kelly and Renee are able to do in the tag championship. I hope that it's going to be more of a showing of what she can do. We shall see, of course, you know, facing off against Jazz and Jordan. We know who's moving forward in that one, but I really right. do hope they give them the time and the uh, opportunities to showcase. What I think they'll do. probably, I think they'll probably get about seven, eight minutes, just like just like the Sea Stars did, you know, just to to kind of give them a little showcase, give them a little work, give them a look. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Jordan Grace and, and Jazz are the two powerhouses that are just gonna, you know, we're, they're just gonna run them over, I think. But uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, Killer Kelly and Jordan would be a great to see uh, mix up too. Uh, next week in that match, um, but yeah, and then uh, you know, of course, we do get uh, after the match, uh, Susie's music hit, and I don't know how you felt about this because this is clearly the uh, the magic of having a taped wrestling show versus a live wrestling show, um, but having Susie come out to the ramp and say, uh, you know, hey, you you beat up my friend, and I'm sorry, but now my friend is here, and she's not very nice, or something like that. And then Sue Young's music hit. And then Sue Young, of course, come, they cut away. Susie turns around, and then Sue Young comes out. Uh, for, you know, the listeners that are not familiar, Sue Young and Susie are, of course, uh, portrayed by the same person. Um, and, in fact, up until this point, have been the same person in, in Impact lore. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost Fiend Bray Wyatt-ish. Um, where like Bray Wyatt yeah. will interact with the Fiend, like through like the television boards. Um, I don't know. I I don't know how I feel about it. Um, we'll see. Hopefully, it's not something that continues too too much. Um, but if it does, it does. You know. But they, they've they've done a pretty good job with the uh, character. So, you know, I'll trust them to to kind of make that decision. But uh, you know, of course, you know, Su Young tries to get the. Uh, the old man of client and doesn't isn't able to get it in. And Deanna and uh, Kimberly are able to escape and walk right past Susie, uh, who just kind of stays still the whole time. So it, it was it was an interesting segment. It was so creepy. I I actually kind of enjoyed it because Josh, you should have seen my face. So when Susie comes out and then they hit Sue Young's music and then she immediately hits the ring, I was like holy shit how did you change so fast like she has face makeup and stuff and then i forgot that it was pre-taped i was like thinking i'm watching i don't know aw or something i was like i was like oh my god what i was so impressed and i'm right. like oh wait <laughs> this is pre-taped of course i can right. get away with it but you know i actually enjoyed it i thought it was really the person that they had stand in for Susie while Sue young was making her way out had the same body type as her and it was just kind of creepy how Susie's just kind of standing there like a dead person like a, a doll right. which is what she is and I don't know I thought it was very well executed in that point I can't criticize it just yet because what if they do something really freaking cool with it later on we, it's still too early to tell what they're going to do with you know having those two personas physically together in the same room when we know it's portrayed by one person so It'll be interesting right. to see where they go with it, and I don't know. I'm excited. They're trying something new. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not a live crowd. It's not live air. It's you know, it's all pre-taped stuff. So you might as well do with pre-tape what you can do with pre-tape. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Exactly. Exactly. I thought they nailed it. And we go backstage again. Man, if we were running between the ring and the backstage every time they did something, we'd be running a lot today. <laughs> but we find out that Alex Kelly is back. He's back yep. from injury. As you guys recall, he wasn't able to participate in Bounce for Glory at the uh, the, the big match for the for the tag team titles. 
He was taken out. He was dropped on his head, and he's back. He's all healed, and he's back there with his tag team partner. They are pissed. They have a to-do list of who to get back to, and mm-hmm. so good to hear that he's back. I forgot the names that he mentioned. He mentioned the Good Brothers. He mentioned, of course, the North. Oh, yep. Yeah, yep. Also Triple XL because you know, of course, they they jumped to backstage, so you know. It'll be interesting to kind of see uh, how they get that together. I'm excited. And now, so, okay, all the freaking puns with this one. Not the puns, but... So last week, when we... On last week's show, we had the Good Brothers backstage, hanging out with Spots and more, and Ethan Page comes in and says... Is this what you guys are doing? You guys are in the pockets of management back here? Anyways, he's pissed. He says he demands a rematch for the titles. Because, of course, they won it over at the um, at turning point. The Good Brothers, they want Ethan Page first to face off with someone um, before they give him the rematch. And he's like, fine, fine, I'll do it. And they said they know exactly who they want for this match. They have someone who is <laughs> phenomenal. And I was like, Oh, what? What is happening here? They were just <laughs> dropping, you know, the hints that we all... I was like, they cannot be bringing AJ. Like, how is this possible, right? So I was very right. intrigued from that, the previous episode. And here we are. We have Ethan Page. He comes out to the ring. He's there with Josh Alexander. And then Carl Anderson comes out, and he's ready to introduce the phenomenal one. The phenomenal one. <laughs> AJ Swoggle. Uh, lol, 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 lol. I was laughing so hard. I didn't believe it. He even looks like him. I thought it was funny too. Is uh, they even played the full on music and Titan Tron and everything from when AJ was in TNA. Yes. And and I, it was clearly I, like a uh, okay, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> I thought it was so funny. I think it, could this be one of the situations where AJ actually owns his. His, well, uh, sure, trademark. yeah, right. He's right. he's he's used that name, uh, you know, in With TNA, in New Japan. He was AJ Styles, so uh, he's definitely you know, Alan Jones owns his own trademarks. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but you know, uh, Swaggle, yeah, like you said, I mean, he kind of does look like a a, a miniature AJ Styles, <laughs> uh, for lack of, for lack of a better word, honestly. Um, but yeah, he comes out. He even does the uh, the, the pose with the gloves. Um, I freaking the... loved it. <laughs> it was pretty funny, um, you know. And listen, Swaggle Swaggle knows how to wrestle. I mean, the guy can the guy can go a little bit. Um, so, but yeah, he, the 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 ring announcer does introduce him as the we nominal um, <laughs> AJ Swaggle, and I'm just like, uh, you know. Perf- <laughs> Wrestling, wrestling is wrestling, and, and and that's you know, they they certainly will you know as long as Swaggle's okay with it, and uh, signing off on those those jokes, then then by all means, um, but you know. I think so. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's done more <laughs> embarrassing and demoralizing things in his career than being uh, called the nominal one. He did run around dressed up at, uh, as a leprechaun for many years in, in WWE. Uh, as uh, Fit Finley's Fit Finley's uh, son, so oh. I think that's I think that's. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they, they, I'm pretty sure he was his son or something, right? That was that was what it was. Oh. I don't I know. Do, don't quote us on, on don't quote us on Fit <laughs> Finley's fake children. Okay, that's not what we're here for. <laughs> but hey, actually, Swaggle had a pretty good showing here. He was getting in some yeah. offense on Ethan Page. It wasn't a squash. He was he was getting some some work done, and he actually got the win over with the schoolboy on Ethan Page, which I thought was fantastic. I was actually like, oh okay, Swaggle, you can still go, yeah. And Ethan Page is a big guy. He's tall, and I love that right. Ethan Page was like he was giving it his all too. You know, he's he's not one that's going to be like I'm too good for or something like this. Like no, like he was throwing those clotheslines and trying to like reach down to Squaggle <laughs> so that he could like yeah. duck over it. I thought it was so good. I thought this was very well executed. And the yeah. moral of the story here is that this defeat of Ethan Page is it's demoralizing for him. Like you know, he's all ego, Ethan Page. Well, where's your ego when you're being schoolboy by? 
you're, yeah, you're beat with the school board by Squaggle in the ring for the condition was like, if he won, he can get the, the rematch for the titles. And now he's really not in that contention anymore. Is that not right? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that was it. Like, he kind of blew it on uh, losing to the Swaggle there. And then, yeah, exactly, out of all people, to Swaggle. So, we'll see kind of like the breakdown. Of course, Josh Alexander was not happy. And Ethan Page just looked so distraught in the ring post-match. Um, so, I can't wait to see kind of where that spirals. Anything that has to do with Ethan Page, I am here for. Because the man can act. The man can wrestle. The man looks fantastic. <laughs> and I cannot wait to see what what the future holds for him in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe we get a broken Ethan Page and he just turns into Karate Man. <laughs> <laughs> broken Ethan Page. Aww. You never you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh my gosh, where are my notes here? Oh right. Oh sorry. Give me one second. I actually think I just messed up my notes in my MacBook. Oh no. Well, I can tell you what I'll I can take us through this next match while you try and figure out your notes. Um, <laughs> Please. This uh, this next match was a real barn burner of thirty five seconds before the bell was rung for a DQ. Um, so technically, Falaba gets the win over Davari uh, because Falaba was the first one to eat uh, a power bomb here. Um, but he, uh, you know, uh, Joe Doring and Eric Young come out and interrupt the match between Falaba and Davari. Um, and I was surprised that, that Doring was able to get followed by up for such a menacing power, uh, power slam there or power bomb, I should say. Um, and that was, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what kind of happens with Eric Young and, and Joe Doring and what they kind of set their sights on. Cause they've just kind of been running out and interrupting matches that shouldn't be happening anyways. Um, but you know, <laughs> just, yeah, they just kind of come out and they're just being disruptive and trying to, uh, you know, make their presence known. It's kind of like, okay, like Eric Young's been doing this. He was the world champion. Uh, I understanding that Doring is just, you know, brand new and you're trying to establish that character, but tell us what they're doing. What are they, what's their, what's their end game here? What are they trying to prove? What are they chasing? Are they chasing a world title? Are they chasing tag titles? Uh, we don't really know. They're just kind of still just beating guys up. How are you feeling about Joe Dory being an impact? Um, I'm Are you not familiar very, where his background? I know that he was pretty big in all Japan. Um, that's I mean that's about as much as I know about all Japan wrestling <laughs> in general. <laughs> um, you know, sorry, yeah. sorry to Josh number one who who knows all the all Japan stuff. Um, but no, uh, yeah, I I don't know too too much about Doring. Um, I know that he was a triple crown champion and he's a big big ass dude. So. Um, other than that, uh, I, you know, I, my buddy, oh, well, and my brother, my soon to be brother in law, Zach, is also an all Japan fan. And he said that, you know, getting Doring over here was a pretty big get for Impact. So, you know, I'll take their word for it and be like, you know, I'd like to see him in, uh, in a full on match here. So, uh, hopefully we get to do that soon. Well, it's good to hear about Zach because I know he is, I mean, he's one of our friends. He, he is. A huge wrestling fan. I mean, I, I'll take his word for it too. But so far, what I'm seeing, you know, like his look. Yeah, he's a big guy, but I don't know. He doesn't seem that intimidating to me. Maybe there's just something there. I mean, we need an explanation as to what's happening here. They they came out at turning point. I think we saw them last week. We see them mm-hmm. this week. The same spiel. You know, they're just interrupting matches from guys that have no association to them whatsoever. They're just kind of there to wreak havoc and. You know, EY, of course, takes a mic and he says, this is our world. This is our world. Okay. That's kind of what you did when you first came to Impact. You won the championship on your own. Now you have this big band. Like, what are your intentions here? What are, what, what's happening? And we haven't really heard a word from Joe, really. So no, I guess it's one of those things yet. that we have to, right? We have to kind of just wait and see how it plays out. But I'm, I'm kind of disinterested at this point. Hopefully that can, that can change and I can pick up. Um, moving forward, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but Rhino does come out um, to take them out. It was payback from last week, so Joe and EY actually jumped Rhino last week. And from what we could tell, they took out Heath um, as well when they kind of locked him in the room. And of course, Heath is injured, 
and they just shut the door behind them and the poor guy we didn't hear from him again so rhino comes out but it's a numbers game three and one and you know not much happened there except for ey continues with this spiel about this being his world and we'll (laughs) see what happens (laughs) yep exactly Uh, we do yeah not much that's that's a a waiting one waiting to see what happens all right we go backstage we (laughs) this one i put in capital letters and i put ha 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 brian myers says tjp is a clown just like crazy steve but just without makeup and i laughed so hard (laughs) yeah a little bit a little bit of real life uh intruding our our backstage segment there I thought it was hilarious. I'm sure we'll see moving forward, you know, some things here with Brian Myers, Squeezie Steve, you know, like we mentioned earlier, he was in the suicide getup. Um, the whole thing with Raheem Raju, TJP, we'll see where this goes. They're kind of just building up some, some feuds here, some storylines. Yeah. And, yeah, I think that should be good. And especially if we can, no, because, well, I guess the exhibition championship doesn't have a weight division, like, there's no weight limit anymore. You, can you see Brian Myers taking that up eventually? Like, if he gets involved in this whole crazy Steve TJP rookie thing? I think we're going to see TJP be the one to take it off mm-hmm. of Rohit. I just feel like that's just the way it's going to be. So, we'll okay. see how it we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, I think uh, the, the big thing with TJP, and, and, and this is pure speculation on my point, um, but I think that him being in the New Japan Cup Chris Bay being in the New Japan Cup. You're going to see these guys, especially TJP, who has that long-standing relationship with New Japan. Um, I think you're going to see more and more of that. Uh, kind of, you know, like, hey, look, our one of our champions was on New Japan Cup. I think that's kind of, oh. you know, try and pull some New Japan uh, viewership over to Impact Wrestling. So That makes perfect sense. I didn't even think of it like that. I think, you know, I, I hate to think that they, yeah, I hate to think that they, you know, always make, you know, decisions that way, but, you know, you're trying to always get more eyes on your product, so why not push, you know, that kind of situation there? Oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's a business. All right. We have Kimberly and Deanna. They're backstage after the whole freaky incident with Susie and Too Young. They're tired of it. They want nothing to do with it. They actually <laughs> turned to Father Mitchell about their Too Young uh, situation. They are saying, "Hey, can you do something about Too Young? Because we'd rather deal with Susie instead of this undead bride, uh, yeah. Susie Young crazy person." Makes sense I to me. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah. But hey, they're reaching out to Father Mitchell. I'm not too familiar with the whole Father Mitchell character in uh, Impact, but I know he can uh, make a mess of things from what I've uh, heard, seen, read, and so we'll see. Yeah, and he was, he was kind of creepy uh, because he said something like, oh, okay. you know, I'll, I'll help for a price, but then he doesn't tell them what the price is. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's so just wait. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> What do I have to give you? <laughs> Creepy. But now we are finally here at the main event of this Impact episode 1124. Like I mentioned earlier, we have 10 Shamrocks. I can't believe it. In 2020, in the main event for a major tag, oh, no tag, a major championship <laughs> match, uh, he comes out with Sammy Callahan, and this is for the title against Rich Swan. You just shook your head with your eyes closed. Slowly yeah, and so disappointed in life. <laughs> I, you know, we we had a similar talk. I think when when we saw Rob Van Dam challenging for the uh, Impact World Championship back when Eddie Edwards was the champion. I I appreciate that they have these older guys on there. They're still working. Uh, they're still able to have a you know a, a decent match. Um, but. I, I, I would much rather see probably anyone else on that roster get the title shot uh, besides Ken Shamrock. But, you know, maybe uh, maybe some people are Ken Shamrock heads. I don't know. I don't know how much this is, how much positive 
uh, impact. This is, damn it, this is having for impact. <laughs> I hate that I keep using that word. It's just there. Um, yeah, who is still, I mean, yeah, he's a UFC, well, they kept calling this out, a UFC uh, Hall of Famer. Yes, he has all this, but man, this match was not much of anything. It no. was just 10 throwing some small, meaningless kicks to Rich and Rich selling his ass off. I will give him that. Rich sold his ass off like you've never seen him sell before. <laughs> Rich, yeah, Rich definitely made it seem like what Ken was doing was just like the most painful, brutal mm. thing of all time. And I feel like Ken yeah. didn't didn't lift his leg more than four inches off the ground this entire match. So he did it right. I was like, <laughs> bro, I know you can kick better than that. He was not even lifting his leg at all. No, his kicks were were very lame. They were so lame. But Bridge meant when he was out there selling it like it was the hardest kick he's ever felt in his life, and we know for a damn fact that it's not true. Um. So it was a slow, very simple, methodical. I, I want to give them that. It was a methodical heat, which not really. It was just I felt just kind of lazy. Mm. He didn't do and didn't do a whole lot. Um, we did see some freaking amazing uh, spin heel kicks from Swan, and mm -hmm. he did them in a row. So I don't know how flexible you are, Josh, or uh, anyone out there listening. Try doing one of those. You're gonna hurt yourself. I I will hurt myself because <laughs> my hips do not. I don't know that. Whew. And he hit them right and right where he needs to too. He's so precise with his kicks, Rich Schwartz. He is. And, yeah. And, oh my God. Yeah. And they're they're they look like they hit right on impact where they need to, but not to where they hurt you. He's he's amazing. I, I I've always really loved Rich Swan. And yeah, what? <laughs> I will say the thing that I didn't like about this match, aside from Ken Shamrock being in it was the fact <laughs> the fact that they couldn't just have Rich Swan pin him clean. Like he had to like yeah. reverse a you know a, a chokehold into a pin. A choke, yeah. And I'm just like what are we what are we protecting Ken Shamrock for? Is Ken Shamrock not doing He's clean not jobs? To be protected. I mean, yeah. you know <laughs> it's like ugh, all right, whatever. Um but so I mean <laughs> The match, the match, of course, leads to a post-match, you know, breakdown. Uh, Sammy Callahan gets the baseball bat out. Eddie Edwards comes to help, and of course, somehow Sammy Callahan tapes him to the top rope uh, in the corner and hits him in the forehead with a baseball bat. As soon as he did that, I said, "Okay, uh, I I don't think Eddie's doing a blade jump on this, but they're gonna get some some movie magic uh, going here." Um, and I will tell you this much, uh, the amount of blood that was on Eddie Edwards' face was incredible because they definitely just took a gallon of fake blood and just, like, splashed him in the <laughs> face with it because there's no way taking a hit from a baseball bat to the forehead would splatter your face like that. It just would not happen. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry. Not just... in that way. Not, I mean, I've actually seen somebody get rocked in the head with a baseball bat with a freaking metal baseball bat and like full hard hit it was brutal and not mm. that much blood came out and especially not the way that sammy hit it sammy hit it he didn't swing he did the whole like right when you do it with the chair he hit it yeah it like, and with, with the, not that much blood from that. with the hand protection too like his hand was on the yeah. end of the bat like he hit him with the back of his hand right it's one of those like, those those wrestling things where you're just like all right, I get it. You know, like I would whatever. have rather him bleeded. <laughs> yeah, right. Because then at least it would have been a little bit of blood. But um, yeah, I mean, it was it was interesting. It was you know, we're we're I don't know. We're moving on to whatever happens next in that feud. Uh, you know, maybe we're gonna get. I, I'm sure at some point we're gonna get a tag match with Eddie and Rich against Ken and Sammy or something. Uh, I don't know that that's the big payoff that everyone's waiting for, but that's the payoff they're probably going to get. I think this is more a storyline of Eddie and Sammy because they keep bringing back the storyline of Sammy almost ending his career back when that accidental chair bat incident before. Every time 
I see Sammy rub a chair or rub a bat. I'm like, I smell Eddie Edwards. And I'm like, yep, here he comes. <laughs> so could, maybe that could be the way they're they're going more off of. But it's it's been done, you know. It's, I don't yeah. know. They're trying to recapture that interest, I guess, from before maybe. I'm not sure. I don't really, I'm not really too into this. But we'll Me see neither. what happens. Yeah, hey, listen, I trust, I trust, you know, what Scott Demore and Don Callis are doing. So, you know, we'll we'll see uh, how this progresses. And uh, I will point out, too, that uh, D'Lo Brown decided to come out from the back oh, yeah. during the beatdown. And he got such a potato from Shamrock. Like, Shamrock <laughs> caught him so flesh. It, you could tell D'Lo was like, like, I've watched it a few times. And even Gail Kim I, on Twitter was like, yeah. He rocked him pretty good. Like Ken caught D'Lo. Like it wasn't it wasn't a working bunch. It was a shoot. <laughs> oh my god! I gotta go back and watch it because I may have blinked or something. But I just saw D'Lo freaking go down. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> I'll uh, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you the 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 gift that that I saw. It was pretty. Oh it was god, pretty please. intense. Um, <laughs> it, it was pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely uh, go check out that gift. Um, but hey, you know what? That's our uh, episode of Impact for this week. That's Impact. I hope you guys like it. I enjoyed it. You know, like like I mentioned every time, yes, there's a lot of... Uh, Impact is so easy for me to watch. You know, they, they build these storylines. They go through with them. There's good wrestling. This one didn't... It was more, you know, segment heavy, but it was so great. And, you know, I'm excited to see what, what, next, spring, what next week brings. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, before we do move overall? on, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was an entertaining episode, at least, right, with the wrestler score and everything. Um, and I will say, before we move on from Impact, we do want to say rest in peace uh, to uh, co-founder of TNA Impact, uh, Bob Ryder, um, who was found uh, deceased today uh, in his home in Nashville. So, uh, you know, a uh, lot, lot of love from the uh, the Impact roster on Twitter today. Um, just saying, you know, rest in peace to uh, him. He had been, I guess, uh, battling cancer for some time, um, oh. and and so they tried to do a wellness check. They they Impact didn't hear from him. Tried to do a well, called a you know, wellness check, and police found him uh, dead in his home. So uh, yeah. you know, thoughts and thoughts and prayers uh, certainly to the the entire Impact team and and to uh, the family of Bob Ryder as well. Um, but to uh, not to leave it. Uh, on a, uh, a down note, we do want to talk about, since this is, you know, we're, we're recording this, and now it's actually, we've crossed over into Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to you, Jamie. Um, happy but Thanksgiving! We, are, we started recording this the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, um, so we want to take some time and just, you know, talk about, you know, the, the things that we're, we're thankful for when it relates to video games. Uh, and definitely, uh, the first thing I'm going to say I'm thankful for, Sandy, is I'm thankful that I'm not working in a retail store that sells video games any longer uh, during Black Friday. That's that's my first thing I'll lead off with. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, same. We both worked at Best Buy. Actually, you know what? I am being a Debbie Downer because I actually enjoy working those hectic days. Like, I just remember working at Best Buy and, like, it's four in the morning it's freezing outside and I have my little jacket like we're like going through the line and like greeting people and giving them <laughs> tickets and stuff I don't know I actually enjoyed that it was fun it was something out of the the ordinary and to me it felt like easy days of course I was doing like cell phone activations I only worked in the gaming department for like six months before I got promoted and I don't know I enjoyed it and of course yeah. I would tell everyone coming in to buy stuff I'm like why Nintendo? Forget about Sony and Microsoft. Nintendo's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I worked in computers, so it's a little bit of a different story for me. Not that oh, fun. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, computers especially... Computers my least favorite. Yeah, we had people line up around the building to try and get, you know, a $200 laptop. Or one year it was a $150 laptop. And I'm like, listen, the store has seven of these. We've, or <laughs> we've already, you know, because what we would do is we'd go and we'd... You know, you know this. Uh, we'd hit the people in the line and say, "Hey, are you here for this product?" And we'd have the the tickets to claim it. And the first seven people would always take the laptop, and that was just it. That was the end of the laptops. And people, you know, <laughs> halfway down the building would be like, "I'm looking for the laptop." Listen, buddy, 
You should have been here on Monday <laughs> and in line because that's what the people you were doing. You should have camped out a month ago. <laughs> so, right, exactly. So, thankfully, uh, we don't have to deal with that this year. We can kind of relax and just keep an eye on the Black Friday game sales, um, which, you know, a lot of stores started early, Sandy, and I, I've already taken uh, advantage of a couple. Uh, I did pick up Star Wars Squadrons from GameStop for sixteen ninety nine, um, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Stop. What? I'm I'm disappointed in you, GameStop. Well, well, listen, they had the best price on the game. The devil. I know, I know. Are you can price match Best Buy price match, price matches everyone. I don't. They don't buy. You, best Buy doesn't price match on Black Friday sales. You know that. So. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, I also went to. Be- I also did go to Best Buy and pick up uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot on sale for fourteen ninety nine. So, oh, have you played yeah. it yet? I I started playing a little bit last night when my son was watching me, and it's a slower paced game at least to start because it is an RPG style game. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll be playing it probably this week, and now you know maybe next week I'll have a bit more of a review for it. Um, but yeah, there's tons of game sales. Uh, uh, GOG has been going nuts. Steam has been going nuts. Anything you've uh, seen on Black Friday sales that caught your eye, Sandy? What? Oh me? In, no, because yeah. I'm freaking broke right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying so hard not to shop the damn Black Friday sales. And I don't know if you guys, I'm any gamer that has, well, I guess if you don't have Twitter, it'd be hard. But cheap ass gamer on Twitter, and like there's Dr. Wario who, they their job literally is this time of year to be on top of every gaming retailer in the world and yeah. let you know when things go on sale right away. Wario64, so like, yeah. Wario64. Wario. That's the best Twitter account. Yeah. Uh, if you're a gamer, period. Oh He's the best. He's the lifesaver. I've gotten so many good deals from him because, you know, as soon as he tweets, it's like, if it's something that's discounted tremendously, it's going to go quickly. Or he'll even post, like, when the websites have glitches and they, they price something that's not right and it's so incredibly cheap. He's like, do it now. See if you can get the order through. And then I've gotten so many good things from that. And, of course, he was my one to help me with uh, when I wanted to do all the special edition uh, 3DSs. <laughs> and the freaking people, which I'm still kind of embarrassed about, but yeah, super helpful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But no, I haven't, I haven't gotten anything yet. I know Logan and I want to grab um, the new Black Ops game, and don't don't make fun of me for playing, you know, Call of Duty games. They're so much fun. <laughs> oh no, I certainly would never do it. But anywho, uh, aside from you know Black Friday sales aside, you know what's uh, what's a game that you're thankful for this year, Sandy? I'm thankful for a person who had a month, uh, a month, a birthday uh, this month on November 16th. I'm very thankful for Mr. Shigeru Miyamoto. <laughs> he is the creator of The Legend of Zelda, and he turned 68 this year. And I made sure to go on Twitter and wish him a very happy birthday because without him, there would be no Mario, no Zelda, and freaking Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong yeah. You name it. Yeah. He, oh. You know, if I ever get to meet this man, I feel like I would probably freak out more than if I met, like, Stone Cold. No, I can't. No, if I met Stone Cold, I would literally <laughs> die. He's up there, you know? Like, right, Stone Cold's right. my number one. He is the... So, fun fact, everyone. Stone Cold Steve Austin was my first human crush. And there, like, I was, like, eight or nine when this happened. And Stone so, Cold. all of my boyfriends... Yeah, he's, he's the reason why we're here, Josh. <laughs> he is the reason why mo like ninety eight percent of my ex boyfriends have been tall white men who are mainly bald with beards. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I don't know. If Logan you know Logan that. just chimed chimed in from the other room. Uh, he doesn't exactly fit that uh, that profile. <laughs> so, well, you know, he's tall. He doesn't look um, like white because he has Puerto Rican in him but he's kind of he kind of fits a bit the beard he's not completely bald no he doesn't fit he's not but... bald at all <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he's got a very full head of hair 
But yeah, so that's my reason why. But no, Mr. Miyamoto, I would absolutely love to meet him one day. He turned uh, 68 this year, and I was very thankful for him. And of course, that brings me along to uh, being very thankful for uh, The Legend of Zelda. I feel like if I were stranded on a deserted island, um, I would have my Switch with Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing, and... Maybe like Mario Kart to pass the time, and I feel like I'd be all set. <laughs> yeah, Do you no, have I... three deserted island games? Three deserted island games. And don't worry about the whole system, the logistics of like having sure, the sure, system sure, in sure. the app. Yeah, <laughs> um, I would say Final Fantasy VII, the original one, is definitely one of them. Okay. Um, probably Ocarina of Time. And then, I don't know, I'd probably do like a, a sports sim, like an NHL game. Just just because you can play those games endlessly. So if you're stuck on a deserted island with... with so that's kind of, you know, that would be my my go-to there. Um, but yeah, I, I'll say I am thankful for uh, game developers, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, pushing the envelope and and trying to come up with something new but also making sure that it comes out right so like uh you know shout out to uh, cd project red for not rushing cyberpunk uh 2077 uh you know we're still waiting on that um and and really oh, for game God. developers that's coming up soon right soon mm -hmm. yeah i think it's okay. i think it's still slated for december 10th um, okay. but, but it was of course supposed to come out months ago and they said, it's not mm -hmm. done yet. It's not ready yet. We're not going to, you know, because if you recall from, you know, when they released the Witcher and stuff, they've always been very, you know, thorough about making sure their games are complete, that they don't need patches, that they don't need this, they don't need that. Um, so definitely looking forward to that one when it comes out. Um, but also, you know, another game that got pushed, and I just mentioned Final Fantasy VII, but Final Fantasy VII Remake, you know, those guys, they said, listen, we know what people expect out of Final Fantasy VII, and we're not going to do that. We're going to keep the characters the same, most of the story the same, um, but then we're going to change the gameplay, we're going to change this, we're going to add things here. Um, and so, you know, I, I really, I, I'm thankful for that game this year because it was... It was taking something you knew and then remaking it, right? And not remaking it in the sense of porting it with better graphics, but really from the ground up, remaking it and recreating it. And, uh, yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, you know, I appreciate when game, game developers do that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a gamble because there's going to be some fans who are like, why did you ruin something that was already perfect to, right. to begin with? But then you have the people like us, I guess, can appreciate the fact that, hey, you're taking something that they know is precious to so many people and they're confident to say, hey, we're going to take this and we're going to try to make it even better, something new, like a new experience that you may love even even greater than than the original. So it is with a gamble, but I feel like most of the times it pays off and I really do hope it pays off for this one. Um, I'm not... A, I don't think I've ever played a Final Fantasy game, to be honest with you. And I know you just gave me a face. Everybody I'm needs wincing. to judge me right now. I'm wincing real hard. I'm being judged. I'm being judged. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just wouldn't even know where to start. So maybe you can you can show me the way, Josh. But, yeah. Yeah. I right, listen. Uh, I'm going to say this, and, and I know that you agree with me here, but you know, I'm thankful for... Uh, you know, the Nintendo Switch being available, um, you know, especially, you know, at, at console launch and through, the, through, you know, the manufacturing of, you know, the different, the, the Switch Lite and everything like that. Uh, Nintendo has proven to be uh, a far better planner than Sony and Microsoft have been with the consoles um, at launch and availability and uh, just, you know, having games ready to go at launch. So... Uh, you know, kudos to Nintendo for, for not letting us down there. Uh, you know, like uh, Microsoft and, and Sony have really uh, kind of dropped the ball, mm -hmm. if you ask me. 
Um, but you Have know, you gotten one yet? No, uh, it hasn't been delivered yet. So I, I, I still have a, I, I still have an order pending. Well, actually, I canceled my order because I got fed up with it. I'm like, I'm not having my money mm-hmm. tied up in limbo for all this time. So uh, I did cancel my order, and then, you know, I'm just gonna say, there's no big games that really came out that I can't play on PS4 yeah. right now. So I have my PS4 Pro. That'll be good enough until you know after the first of the year when the kind of the the hype dies down. That's kind of my my stance on it. So that's a good game plan. That's what I usually do with the uh, the Microsoft and the Sony consoles. Of course, not with Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo, right. it has to be a day one. I'm camping for any Nintendo <laughs> right. thing. So. Hey, listen, I lined up outside oh. of Best Buy for my Switch, so I get it. Yeah, there you go. And so, I'm actually a terrible fan, though, because I didn't pick up Hyrule Warriors. Did you pick that one up? Uh, no, I have not picked up Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity yet, but I plan on doing so. I need to. I don't think it'll be on sale. That's the one thing about Nintendo. Their freaking sales are very far and few between. Yeah, I'll say they did put a bunch of Mario games on sale, which is nice. Hmm. Um, we just picked up... Uh, my son Nolan just picked up uh, Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe on the Switch for like thirty five bucks at Best Buy. So. Oh uh, nice. Yeah, thirty five bucks for that game when it's normally sixty. Um, you know, anytime that you can get a first party Nintendo game like Mario or Zelda on sale at all, uh, definitely take advantage of that. <laughs> Huge! You never see that. No, never, and, and and with good reason. I mean, it is their their flagship stuff. They definitely they don't want to cheapen uh, their brand, so that's kind of where they're at, you know. They don't feel good at doing that. I feel like there's very few companies that have been able to say, "Hey, our product like things don't go on clearance, things don't go on sale. Like we stand by our product." And oh my gosh, I'm this is another thing that I'm thinking for. It's 2020, and Nintendo is still kicking ass. I remember when the freaking Wii U came out and everyone was like, this is it. They lost it. Nintendo is no more. This is a failure. I still have my Wii U and I freaking love it. And, you know, them coming from a small card playing company to what they are now and still being running in 2020. To me, I am so thankful for that. I love them so much. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, in the interest of giving people their time back on the, the holiday weekend, I'll just I'll close my thankful for things by saying, hey, I'm thankful for the ability to do a video game podcast uh, weekly here. Uh, that's also a wrestling podcast, and thankful that I have a great co-host uh, who you know oh. is able to stay up late nights and and, and do this. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you to you too. And very thankful for our listeners. If you guys are out there, thank you so much for tuning in every week. I love you guys. And hey, Josh, play that uh, DBZ game a lot and definitely review it for us because my friend Riley, he's a super Dragon Ball fan and he would love to hear your input on it. I don't think he's played that game. Sure, yeah, no. (laughs) Uh, I mean, it's only $15 right now at Best Buy, so... Which go. the fact that I'm sending people to Best Buy right now just totally messes with my head because I spent so long telling my friends never come into Best Buy because I'd never help them because I was helping too many people already. So, uh, but that's a, that's a that's a whole different problem that we won't get into tonight. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, that's you know we'll put a put a wrap on it uh, for this week. Uh, make sure uh, you check us out on Twitter at a bit suplex. Uh, check out uh, Sandy at Sailor Zelda on Twitter. Um, and I'm at Laughlin underscore Josh. Make sure you follow the Social Suplex Podcast uh, Network at Social Suplex, as well as all of our shows uh, like One Nation Radio. Like I said, I guessed it on uh, last week. Uh, Keeping It Strong Style, Grave Consequences, uh, Ricky and Clive, uh, All Things Elite, um, Grown Mitch Watch This Shit. You know, definitely go check out all of the shows on the network. Buy shirts uh, from all of us that have it, especially during this sale. Uh, pro wrestling tees uh you don't want to miss it uh sandy speaking of missing things am i missing anything no i think we're good happy thanksgiving you guys thank you so yep. much for listening I love happy you thanksgiving all. everyone we'll <laughs> see you all uh same time same place next week bye see ya.